Hello there, it's Sven here again. Um, today is a windy, rainy day here in Florida, so I can't really get out flying, so I figured why not make a quick video of uh, the navlog that I've been working on. So, doing my private pilot's uh, lessons, and I've got most of the way through my uh, check ride at this point. I've got two takeoffs, two landings to do. That's been pushed off a couple of times. So. Uh, as of right now, Monday morning, 7 a.m., I have to do two takeoffs and two landings. And hopefully I will stick those and I will be a pilot. In the meantime, um, kind of thinking about, uh, you know, people that might be going to the check ride, working on their nav logs, and uh, might have some questions. So there's a ton of videos out there on YouTube that go over this. I'm going to go over just a few things and uh, put a link down in the description there to a navlog that I built. So you can access this on the web and kind of just play around with a navlog, see what it does, see how it, it functions, put in some data, print it out, all kinds of fun stuff. So I'll just do a quick demo of how this works. Um, so if you go to the link below, you'll kind of come to this uh, navlog, it'll pop up and it will ask you a few questions about your name and your plane and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you don't have to fill any of this out. You can just continue and look around if you want. Um, for this, I'm just going to, you know, put in a name, Sven Demo 2, and click continue. Uh, it'll tell me to add some checkpoints and put some data in the boxes. Um, another question will come up. Do you want some help setting up the first log entry? So in this case, I'm going to walk through and say yes. I want to go ahead and do that. So let's assume I'm going out flying today. I'll just put my date in there. The tail number of the airplane that I'm going to go in. Um, what's my first checkpoint? Where am I taking off from? In this case, I uh, will do my local airport of X-ray 04. Uh, now, wind direction. Here comes the fun part. Uh, with some DPEs, they'll just uh, you know ask you to pull up for flight if you use it. Show us your flight plan right there. Uh, other DPEs might want to know exactly how you came up with all the calculations. Um, so in this case, I need a wind direction. I need to know what's going on. So what we can do is jump into our aviation weather and look at something like this. Hopefully you know how to decode this kind of thing where you can find your local uh, or the closest airport to you. and determine what altitude you'll be at and kind of read the weather. So in this case, um, 080 at 17, about my 3000 mark, which is what I'm going to use for this demo. So 080 at 17. So I'll go back to my nav log and say 080 and wind velocity 17, check. Okay, what is the heading for the first leg? So this is where you would pull out your navigation chart and your plotter, kind of draw your line from one place to another and figure out what that heading is. Again, tons of videos online tell you how to do that. Uh, I also like to use something called sky vector. So in this theoretical um, trip that I'm taking, I just kind of draw out some lines in sky vector and it will show me some of this information. So uh, this first leg here is 028. I can also just click a nav log here and it will pop up some data for me. So everybody, the question is, well, why wouldn't I just do this and give it to the DPE? You could, but they might grill you and say, well, what does this mean? How did you get these numbers? Why these numbers? One of the other things here with this is uh, I don't have a subscription, so it's going to assume that I'm just flying at 3,000 feet the whole time. That might work for you. Um, when I look at this current trip, though, I see, well, there's some Class Bravo, there's a milita or military area here, there's a training area here, and maybe I can't fly at 3,000, so I need to set some altitudes here. Um, so in this case, we'll just use uh, the number that we got out of there, which is actually Track 22. One interesting thing here is when you look at this on the web, the sky vector will give you 028. That is with wind correction, or, or sorry, with magnetic correction already built in. So there's a difference from what you see here, 028, to when you go to the print version where it's saying 022 and then this plus 7. 
we're going to get into their numbers in a second here. So for now, I'll just say my course is 2-2. Two, two. I'm going to hit enter. Airspeed. So what's the airspeed for the first leg? I'm going to just uh, you know use a number here just so we're kind of using their same numbers, and we'll say it's 72. Um, that's kind of your climb speed usually when you're coming out of your airport, your first uh, climb to top of climb, all that kind of stuff. So how far is this? Uh, so again, look here for a second, sky vector, it's about 18 nautical miles. So I'll throw that in here. Now, it will say fill out some of the green sections. So what this does is it fills out my first line for me here. Now I want to compare some of the data that this database gives you real quickly with something like sky vector. So we can see that um, sky vector had some different temperature or different wind than what I just got. So just to compare apples to apples here, I'm going to uh, use some of their data. So I'll say 089 at 14. True air speed is still 72. Their wind correction angle, they gave me a 10. My database gives me an 11. Uh, the variance, well, what is that? So when I look at sky vector, if you're remembering this, the east is least, west is best thing, on every VFR chart, there's going to be something like this that says six west, uh, seven west, six east, something like that. So in this situation, we're using a seven degree variation because of the track that we'll be taking it kind of is close to the seven degree variation. So I'll throw that in here. My variation is seven degrees. The deviation here is if you have a, a magnetic compass, there will be some sort of card on it. And depending on what your heading is, that compass might be exact or it might be off by just a little bit. That's where you put this in. So, um, so I came up with 40 as my heading. Uh, Sky Vector comes up with 38. So why is that? When I look at some things on Sky Vector, I notice that they have 22 plus 10 is a 32. 32 plus 7 is a 39. So I'm not quite sure where they came up with the 38. Uh, my database comes up with 39 point something, uh, and it rounds it up a little bit. So that's where I came up with the 40. So the distance here, um, that first leg, what they are doing is taking the first leg and and calculating two different pieces to it. So the distance uh, taking off and then to the top of climb. So what we can do here is use some of the same data and start filling in things like top of climb. Uh, what altitude do we want to go? So there's where the big difference is. Uh, as I'm building my nav log, I might say top of climb, I want to be at 1500 and I want to stay there because I'm climbing out from underneath a class Bravo shelf here. Might be that my first checkpoint, now I need to go over 4,000 to get over this thing. So Sky Vector, um, the advanced version of ForeFlight, you know, maybe you can set all that, but again, sitting with a DPE, you might need to be explaining this kind of stuff. So I know that this uh, training area um, I need to go up to 4,500 feet, so I can start filling that kind of stuff out. Uh, same sort of thing here is like at that, as I get up to altitude, the wind is 101 at 16, 105 at 15, so I can fill that out. 101 at 16, 105 at 15, things like that. Now my course is 22 still, and then 7. I'm going to change course at some point, so I throw that kind of stuff in. And uh, airspeed, 110. Let's just throw that in there. And 110. And you can see that it's now figuring out this course. Again, since it's all in the same area, I need to add my magnetic variance here. So I'm going to put those in. So now I come up with 40, 37, 22. Again, their numbers are just slightly different because of the way they're rounding and all that kind of stuff. So we have some numbers. You can just kind of go through and fill the rest of this out. Uh, now we have some green areas up here. So when are we actually taking off? Uh, I'm going to say, let's say 9 o'clock in the morning we'll be taking off. What this will do is calculate 
a few of the things really quickly, like um, when you should hit this based on the distance. So this first leg is going to take about 15 miles because I had put 18, but if we m match up what they said here, it's you know four miles in the first leg and about 14 on the second leg. So we'll put four and a 14. And then the third leg is 23 miles roughly. So we're gonna throw that in here. Now when I set up my time again, it will start to calculate um, the time. So the first little bit here is three minutes. So 8.03, I should hit the first spot. 8.11, the second spot. 8.25, the third spot. Um, now um, you can see some negatives here. So far, this is just calculating uh, how long the entire trip is and how long you have left. So I can put in the trip distance. We'll just even it out here, call it 41. So after the first leg, I have 37 miles left. After the second leg, 23. And the third leg, I'm done. Um, how much fuel are we going to have? So if I put in, let's say, 30 gallons of fuel in my plane, it will calculate uh, based on um, based on the fact that I put in 30 and there's a certain amount of time, uh, but I need to know gallons per hour. So if you go look at your POH, it will tell you uh, at a certain altitude, at a certain RPM, here's how much fuel, fuel you'll be burning. So I'll throw in 9.2, which is kind of normal for my airplane. So when I put that number in, it calculates that, you know, half a gallon of fuel, 1.3, 2.8, that kind of stuff for this time. Um, now taxi and run up. So if my plane uses about 1.7 for taxi run up, so I go ahead and put that in. Now when I adjust this fuel, and I say there's 30 gallons in there and enter again, um, it will start to calculate based on 30 gallons minus my taxi. I have 28 left, 26 left, 24 left, that kind of thing. Um, so I did another video which kind of talks about how there's, you know, a weight and balance area. I can go in here and um, put in my plane and my pilot passenger, rear seats, fuel, all this kind of stuff. Um, put the weights in there, put the arm in there and come up with a CG for this. So, you know, take your plane, the weight of the plane, you know, 15, 16 and the arm, whatever it is, uh, and kind of fill all that in based on your POH and it will then calculate a center of gravity using your total weight of your, uh, of your uh, weight and balance here, you can see in the POH if you're within the CG limit there. Um, so we also have a couple of things here. I have a way to just list the legs for my flight. So if I wanted to, I could just have a quick little list of what I'm looking for here, um, printable. Uh, can also uh, you know print it in the standard view. So if I hit print here, it will go and give me this nice little layout here of my standard view. So if I wanted to save this out, I can go ahead and save this and dump it out as a PDF here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then if I open up that PDF, I have a nice printable piece of paper that I can use uh, bring it to my check ride, things like that. So again, this is a work in progress, but it was something I just thought was kind of neat um, sharing it with people. So uh, give me a like and a subscribe and trying to grow this channel, do more videos. Um, and please go check out this database. Let me know what you think. Thanks.